Hey guys, what's up? JB Illusion back, and I can tell you who's not back. The Plastic Face Man has finally been defeated, and we now know what's going on with Raymond and everything else. Our papa is currently <laughs> captured by our grandmother and may possibly be getting brainwashed as we speak. That's not... that's very wrong on quite a few levels. Let's talk to Kindly and see what's up with her and see how she feels about this. The walk through the Mahjong Parlor is punctuated by the tantalizing smell of coconut and fried confection. Ooh. Your crew surrounds Kindly Chang, watching uncomfortably as she peels small egg-shaped delicacies from a waffle-like pastry and pops them into her mouth. Each time she does, her eyes close in ecstasy. A soft sound comes from her throat. There you are, Hollywood. Your crew here tells me that you were able to locate and interrogate the plastic face man. The straw sandal's eyes narrow and her rusty voice takes on a jagged edge. They haven't told me his current disposition, however. I assume everything went as I instructed. I was going to take the face as a trophy, but I thought it would be tacky. Of course. Oh, I don't know. The triad boss smiles. Her little black eyes flash. Trophies have their value. Gabbett's eyes scans the room, apparently looking for trophies. Ha, <laughs> makes sense. I trust you got something useful out of him. We got plenty. Duncan Wu sounds eager. He gave us a data dump on everything he knew about Prosperity Tower. First hand info. Josephine's headquarters. She puts down the pastry, rubs her nose, considering... That could be useful, I suppose. What do you intend on doing with it? We're gonna rescue Raymond. He's alive, Auntie. Just like I said he was. Josephine's holding him there. She's doing something to his brain. Something to his brain? She takes another bite of her pastry. What is that old bitch up to now? Based... <clears throat> Based... On the memory that Mr. Plastic, fa <laughs> Mr. Plastic showed us, it looks like he she's trying to rewire her son's memories using something called ASSIST, Artificial Sensory Induction Systems Technology. It allows the user to record, process, and feed synthetic sensory input to the brain. Like a SimSense chip. Yes, Auntie, it's the technology that led to SimSense. It allows what... It's also what allows Deckers to enter the Matrix and grants Riggers a neural connection to their drones. An expert assist technician could alter someone's personality, memory, even identity. I'm guessing experts like that don't grow on trees. Definitely not. Changing someone's memories requires a world-class in assist. A world-class expert in assist and a massive amount of computing power. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing to him, but I'm guessing that his mom wants him to forget something, or to remember it differently, maybe. Alright, what do we know about Prosperity Tower? Mr. Plastic dropped us a couple of terabytes of data on Prosperity Tower right out of his brain. Isabel and I have been studying it. Lots of good intel to mine there. He looks at the rest of the crew. Just what we need to take a run at the place, and hope to get out alive. Cool. Talk to me about the security setup. How do we get to Raymond? The key to this operation are the three security stations located on different floors. The matrix systems in these security stations are the command and control hubs for the entire building's security. As such, they're the best place to find out where Raymond Black is being held. Cool. That's all we've got on his location? All we know is that he's being held somewhere called Lab 12. But, we're, but where that is or how to get it in there is something we'll, we will need to figure out on site. If things go hostile, the best thing to do is get to an alarm panel or matrix security note and shut things down, alright? If we're noticed, we will have a brief window to cut the link to the alarm. If we do that, it will isolate the whole floor from the security team. Cool. The rest of the building won't know what's happening there. 
if the alarm goes off and we cut the link to the alarm system, we can spoof the system, tell it we've moved on to another location. Good. That might work once or twice, but if we spoof too many alarms, they'll figure it out. How long is this brief win window to cut the alarm? Maybe 30 seconds? Maybe less if the network isn't cluttered with traffic? It's there as a failsafe, so security doesn't stampede all over the building if a janitor forgets to close the door. Alright. What about guards? Quantity training. Standard corp security for the most part, but Sang has a rapid response squad for high priority events. That would be us. Is Gobbit right? Do you think an intrusion into Lab 12 would qualify as a high priority event? Judging by the way Grandma Sang took out Carter, Gutshot, and Nidra, I'd say she isn't interested in anyone getting anywhere near her son. Expect to face Sang's elite security once we find him. Hmm. Most do we have on the security stations themselves? Staffing's weak staffing weaknesses? Only one thing worth mentioning. Isabel looks over to Wu. The only way into a security station is with a key card. The guards on each floor carry a card to the station on that floor. Okay. So we can get a card by taking them out, but there may be other ways of getting cards. Wu crosses his arms across his chest. Like I said, the security stations are the key to this operation. They provide multiple opportunities to exploit the system and determine how to approach the rest of our incursion. The security stations are high priority targets. Check. We want to, we want to take them fast with it before they have a chance to respond. So which station do we hit first? The little Decker purses her lips. No way to know. We'll need to take one of them to use it to determine our next step. It's like we have directions to go to find a map. That's all I need to know about the security. Let's hope it's enough to give us an edge. How do we stop this assist thing from rewiring Raymond? All we know is that an assist device is located in Lab 12. It's the only one in the building. Now I doubt that Grandma will just hand over the passcodes to her system if we ask nicely. So we'll need a Decker to access the assist device and eject him from the system safely before she scrambles his brain. That sounds dangerous. It's either that or leave him to Josephine. And that can't happen. How do we make our approach? Fortunately, Prosperity Tower is one of Sang's low security locations. It's mostly administrative, marketing, that sort of thing. Alright. That's good. Kindly turns to her enforcer. Mr. Bao, give the runners those old Sang security passes you used on that hijacking last year. Yes, Miss Chegg. They'll get them. Those passes should get you through the lobby. The Triad Enforcer. Oh, I'm sorry. The Triad Boss pokes a fingernail between her teeth and dislodges a piece of pastry. Ugh. You'll still have to explain your presence, Hollywood. So don't expect to just walk on through. Looks like it's the front door for us. Isabel leans over to Gobbit. Hope those old security passes work, Gobbit. Well, it's better than nothing. Gobbit leans back to Isabel. Hope it's not a viable shadow running tool, is. We can't expect to stay in cover for long. One way or another, things are going to get hot. That's all I need to know. Excuse me. One other thing. While I was helping Duncan verify as much of this data as I could... I decided to collect our marker with Bull and his team of runners. Oh, cool. Good call. We need all the help we can get. Isabel looks up at Wu, her eyes big and round. Yeah, no kidding. Turns out Bull and our friends hit Sang a few months back. Low rent smash and grab for another corp, but they got a quick scan of the building's matrix security before they rabbited. They gave us data flags that pinpoint where the security nodes are located inside of Sang's system. So, when we jack into the security station, we'll be able to make a direct attack on the security node. They could just buy us the seconds we'll need to cut the alarm link. Nice work. Kindly cuts in, licking her fingers with loud, smacking noises. 
One more thing, Hollywood. While you're in our headquarters, look for anything we can use to incriminate or embarrass Josephine. I want dirt, something I can feed to an acquaintance on the Executive Council, someone who stands to gain from it. Right after I rescue my father, she pops another egg treat into her mouth and her eyes close tight with pleasure. Of course, my sweet, of course. Now go enjoy Prosperity Tower. She smiles wolfishly and give Josephine Sang my regards. Alright, we got some decent karma here. So what's going to happen is we're going to check. We have 29 points, good golly. Alright, what exactly are we going to need to make Hollywood a bit stronger? So we're probably going to keep body how it is. We could upgrade quickness. Boom, boom, boom. That's 21 points. Boom. Boom. That would be actually... Huh. Would lightning strike and bound stride and hands actually help us? I, I feel like we also need to boost up our charisma. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to 5... Six here. We're going to be taking security because I feel like that's going to help out. Or should we take academic? Hollywood could be an academic. Eh, we'll go with security. He learned enough. So we've bumped that up. I really think that that's going to be necessary later on. Bound spells would be nice. Killing hands and stride would be awesome. And key onslaught would be nice, but then again, it's kind of like, what's the point? Mystic armor would be the greatest thing ever. Like, like literally. Martial defense isn't going to happen. So what we'll do is... Boom. Boom. We don't have enough left for chain shot. But I'm kind of happy with this. At least our charisma should hopefully get us through some of the events in Prosperity Tower. And as we go about our business, we'll up, we'll level up. Also, I think we can finally use... There's a gun that I would like to use. I might not be able to use it now, but we'll see. Nice. Let's just check in with our favorite gun manufacturers. Or our favorite gun sellers. The Orc family up at this club. They have a very interesting story. If you get a chance to play this game, definitely talk to them a little bit more than I have in this playthrough. I've been trying to go through this game just a little bit quicker. Ooh. Let's turn that down to like here. Good lord. Well, it's a cool club. Bum, 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 bum. Let's talk to Mama Troll. Perhaps a little business to take your mind off of it. So we can now use a Ruger Thunderbolt. Alright, that's good. The Ruger Thunderbolt is Lone Star's premier heavy pistol. And I think that's the highest pistol that we can get right now. Yeah, that's the highest pistol. So we'll equip that later on. And we'll be straight up. Um, are we good on... We're going to pick up some more healing items. Because that's necessary. As you can see, the weather is increasingly getting worse. <coughs> Excuse me. There's so many characters in this game who have such incredible stories. This guy is... People still debate exactly what Ten-Armed Ambrose's story is. Whether he's a good guy, he's a bad guy. No, he's just the guy. Oh god, I'm getting too much. Too much out of that. And we'll take a smaller dock wagon. Cause just to tell you, this is gonna get this is gonna get dangerous. Screw that. Um we'll grab this. I love the medallion, it increases our willpower. I would like to take the mummy talisman. And we can now use the Ruger Thunderbolt. That's 14. 
I like the Room Sweeper, the Bloody End has its uses, so I think we'll switch this out for the Cult. There we go. That works perfectly for me. Goodbye, Ambrose. And we're good. I do believe it's time to have Prosperity Tower. I'm going to compulsively save because I'm that guy. Or maybe I cannot compulsively save. The saving system is actually kind of... <clears throat> slightly weird in this game? Okay, screw it. Let's go. We got the people, we got the money, we got the power. One would hope. Let's do it. I kind of wanted to talk to more of our people, but it's all good. We're going to be taking Duncan, Gobbit, and we're going to have to take Isabel. Because no one else can actually get Raymond out of the situation. Gobbit's for magic. Duncan is just for straight kill potential. I think we should be good. Confirmed. Oh, this is going to get crazy. This is going to get a lot crazy. This is going to get insane. I've played this once before, and I, I love... So, the thing about Shadowrun that I love is it's basically like an Oceans movie or a Born... Not Born Identity, but um, Oceans, it's Mission Impossible. It's all those things wrapped in to like a... Lord of the Rings, Warcraft, fantasy setting. Like, it, it's just fun. The walk to the MTR station is tense, infiltrating the headquarters of a megacorp, and locating Raymond Black will be a challenge enough. Will be challenge enough. Extricating him from his mother's assist device before his memories are permanently altered is another thing altogether. You hop the MTR South Island lane and roll noisily down to the nearby island of Aple Chow. A defense forest of soar a dense forest of soaring skyscrapers and corporate greed. Amidst them, blending innocuously with its neighbors stands Prosperity Tower. You open the door to the lobby and step inside the headquarters of Sang Mechanical Services and its C and its CEO, Josephine Sang. Alright, I think we're pretty set up. Where would this go? Um we can give this to let's just I can't equip. Uh, here we go. <laughs> you get something extra. Boom. I, I feel like I should have bought more. Good grief. No, we're not giving Gobbit drugs. I feel like that wouldn't be a good idea. Alright, hopefully everyone's kitted out. This is going to be pretty sick. I feel like I also should have bought Gobbit, like, a spell to use. But then again, the thing about this is you really don't have... You don't get as much money as you would like. But it's fine if your character is focused. And that's kind of how a character should be in Shadowrun. Okay, so what are our objectives? Optional hack security nodes, discover raiments... Oh my god, we have a lot of stuff. And find evidence on Josephine Sang. The decadence of Sang's administrative lobby is the first thing to hit you. The mood lighting, designer wallpaper, and the scent of burning lavender incense all blur together into a foreign landscape that feels more dangerous than the rotting alleys of Hong Kong. Even the plants seem to con condescend to you in their hand-carved limestone pots. Dang. Across the room from, your stand, from you stands a receptionist. Three guards at her back. She seems unaware, or at least indifferent to you, your presence, but the guard behind her locks their eyes onto you, and adjusts their postures regardless. It appears to be a routine response, as the guard on the far right lifts a hand to his face and lets loose a long, loud yawn. Security may look tight, but we're not in yet. Word, words will only get us so far. Things are bound to get heated eventually. Just be prepared to cover your ass when the bullets fly. We've got a lot to get past before we can get to Raymond. He's right. 
Keep our objective in sight. Kindly said we can find information on Raymond's location in the security stations. It'll be tricky getting into them, but once we do, that's also where we can cut the alarm system. Once we find Raymond, I'd be happy to help with his liberation. She wraps her fingers on her cyberdeck. Oh, and as for the Sang security passes? We shouldn't rely solely on them. They'll help, but using them alongside our own wits will be most effective. Thank you. I love how they're giving us, like specific things if I was actually a kid out street samurai we could just say fight now the receptionist watches you make your way across the lobby she studies you from head to toe and a barely concealed look of disgust on her face welcome to saying mechanical services how can I be of service her forced pleasantry reeks of condescension okay how do we do this hmm we could say I'm here for a meeting, which wouldn't go well. I'm here to make a delivery, which she might just take that right then. Meeting. She looks at you unblinking in blatant disbelief. Is that right? Whisper it. It'll be with you if you don't keep quiet. No. Etiquette corporate. Oh! We, we could have got that corporate. No one, actually. I know how I may appear, but I'm required to go incognito for our quarterly inspection. Okay. We should have took that corporate, but I, I'm still firm in security. Show her our passes? I'm afraid that's confidential. You know how it is. There's a rule for everything these days. Is it alright with you if I make my delivery and come right back? Please proceed. Woo! We got through that one, but we had to use our passes. Um... Let's go to the sub-basement and then go go up from there. I think that's how we should work this. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. So, for the first time in, like, ever, the game actually um, shut down on me. Oh, hello, sir. Sang Enforcer. The guard's brow furrows at, at your approach. He looks giddy or maybe antsy as... He flexes the hand closest to his gun. Halt! This area is off limits. Only select personnel are allowed in here. You have identification? Charisma 5. Show up my passes. Front desk sent me here for new employee orientation. At your words, he seems to relax. He glances at your passes, hardly long enough to read anything, and returns his gaze to you. Ooh, welcome aboard. I'm pretty new myself. Just finished up orientation a month ago. Go on ahead and good luck. Thanks. Alright, what can we do in here? If I remember correctly, there is something useful that we can do out here. I'm guessing. Oh, look! Maintenance manager. You're greeted by the sight of a dwarf leaning against a desk, nose deep in a book. The plaque next to her hip reads maintenance lead. She holds up her finger to silence you, eyes locked on her story. After a moment, she dog ears her page and sets the book on top of the desk. Excuse me. By the time by the way she sizes you up, you can tell that she's not in the business of making friends. Yes? I'm the new hire. When I asked HR for a challenge, they, assist, they assigned me to this department. I'm ready to take on whatever you throw my way, boss. She looks confused and slightly annoyed by your gung-ho attitude. Well, aren't we eager? I'm glad you think so. Before you do anything around here, you've got to change out of those ridiculous clothes. Hit the locker room and grab a uniform. Show some goddamn company pride. She studies you again, clearly unimpressed. Well, at least they finally sent me somebody here. The locker code. Cool. Thank you, miss. So we got the locker code. Oh, this is like the oldest trick in the book. Like, you dress up as, like, the maintenance crew. Because no one ever really pays attention to the maintenance crew. 
Oh, dude, this is awesome. Boop. And who are you supposed to be? First day, first day was told to report here. Well then, welcome to the shit show that is Floor B3. Our boss is a dick, bad at everything, and loves to blame others. That's why the company put her down here. Any tips? Yeah, don't F up. You're at saying now. Not even our god-awful boss will tolerate anything less than your best. In fact, I suggest you make it a habit to check in with her early. She hates it when people are late, and with how much she enjoys pointing that finger, stay on her good side. Oh, that's not fun. That's actually, like, the worst thing ever. Enter the code. What is the code? Um, 2627. There we go. Put on the uniform. All of us. Everyone. Of course, we put in the, like, ridiculous pair of overalls over... Yep, what we got. The rest of your team begrudgingly rifles through the locker room, picking out uniforms closest to their size. One by one they button up, and soon a hodgepodge of frumpy maintenance workers stands before you. A little light in the arms, but great in the hips. I could really tear up a dance floor with this. She swivels her hips and spins on her heel. When she comes back around, she grabs her chin and strikes a pose. This is the pose I'll use to win hearts. She straightens up and pats the uniform. Hope Sang doesn't mind if I, uh, keep this. Nice. Alright, and we got a karma point for that. Perfect. So, I really do think that there's something that we could do around here that will be worth the, the sneaking around in this area. Hello there. We need some more security codes. Much better. Should I... I assume that this is your new sector? That's what they told me. She lets out a breath of relief. About time I got some help down here. I've got a task to break to, to break you in fast. The auto coupler of the main terminal is out. Flow regulars need a restart. Engage its airflow mixers, then report back to me. Oh, I'm thinking we could do something fun. Quite fun, actually. Um, there's a message labeled urgent here. Lee, I need you to get your team together and fix the climate turbine. Make it a top priority. It's been radiating heat on warm days and cooling on cold days. People around the office are getting pissy. It's not going to take their shit on your behalf. I'm not going to take their shit on your behalf. So the longer you wait, the more your quarterly review will suffer. Jesus. <clears throat> Thomas Young, Vice President of Building Maintenance. Attached. Okay, accept the work order. Reboot the controls. Walk away. There's nothing to do here. I think if we brought Ractor, we could have done something very, very cool there. Which may or may not have involved um, setting some stuff on fire. Good work, Rookie. That's all I needed for now. Why don't you take a break? Just do it outside my office. I've got a date with a new novel. Great. Oh, wait. Did I mention that the terminal had another mention um, maintenance request on it? Something about fixing a turbine? I accepted the task. She slams her hands on top of the desk. What? You signed off on the goddamn turbine engine? We can't do that. I'd need... I'd need at least a crew of fourth, four level three techs to even do an evaluation on that thing. Um, the longer the request sat in the system, the worse it'd look for us anyway. The anger drains from her. She closes her eyes and rubs her temple. Shit, Ricky. If you signed off on the order, we've got to do it. Or this department is sunk. This is what we're going to do. You head to the turbine and I'll unlock the admin controls from here. Now it's a very important, very expensive piece of machinery, so you need to do exactly what I say. Got it? Got it. Alright. 
So what do we do? I think this is where the fun will start. The live video window is open in the middle of the terminal screen. Why can't she do it? Because she's lazy. You see the face of the ever tense maintenance manager glaring back at you. Alright, rookie. I've started the turbine in standby mode, so its electronics should be working. I need you to troubleshoot the issue from your end while I reference the machine's manual on my end. Now let's see. It says here we should start by repressurizing the hydraulics. There should be a program on your terminal specific, specifically for monitoring and controlling the turbine. Once you're in there, select the hydraulics and hit the appropriate command. Done. The turbine hisses as the hydraulics pressurize. Well, that's something. Indicator lights are still red, though. Sometimes the engine se size mortar connection becomes misaligned. To try adjusting that, shouldn't need to move it more than a couple of centimeters. Done. Huh, maybe the rotor speed needs to be recalibrated. And done. So something groans inside the turbine. The base of the rotor begins to rumble. Hey, that's it. Don't let the noise fool you. We've identified the problem. The rotor must have been recalibrated and recalibrated the opposite of what it needed. One more try and it should fix the turbine. Give it a go. So we could sabotage the turbine or we're going to repair it and see what happens. The rumbling sounds of the machine steady and the, its indicator light turns green. That's what I want to hear. Great work. I'll remember this come your next review. Anything else I can do? Since you're near here, that means you're part-time, right? So I suggest you head on home, catch up. Alright, bye. So... Yeah, I messed up. We should have... Gone the other way around. 100%. We should have actually blown it up. Hmm. Well, let's remember this moment. I think I'll save. If I can save. And we'll see if that'll actually help us later down the road. Because the first time I played this, I blowed it. I blew it up. I blowed it up. I blew it up and... Oh, some very, very good things. Oh, some very funny things happened. Maybe, just maybe, we can talk to her and ask her some stuff. Um, okay, we'll do. Hmm. Alright, well. There's always another way. I just feel really dumb that I messed up. But we could come back. Sales and acquisition and acquisitions. Hello, ma'am. Oh, now we do have the outfits, though, and no one's actually angry at us. Excuse me, sir, the saying employees on this floor may only be seen through a pre-approved appointment. Not even maintenance is exempt. Do you... do you have an appointment? This will only take a second, just need to tweak some air units. If they get fixed on your watch, it'll look good on your record. Then I can get on with the rest of my work orders, too. A win for both of us, what do you say? I don't see why not. Just try to have an appointment ready next time, okay? To access the air units, um, you will need employees to clear the area. I can get security to usher people out. No need to bother anyone. I can work around them. Have a good one. You too, sir. Vice President of Operations. Interesting. A 
calm, stern-faced man stands before you. He casually checks his watch as he addresses you, his voice tingling with boredom. Tinged with boredom, I've been expecting you. What? You've been expecting us? Like the maintenance uniforms, by the way. An enemy in our skin, classic infiltration tactic. And who are you? Think of me as a business partner. And are you done yet? I have places to be, people to kill. He snaps his fingers and the guards behind him train their weapons on your position. Before you decide anything, at least hear me out. You're in a position to come out of this with an edge against Sang. That alone should be enough to pique your interest. Alright, speak. It just so happens that you've stumbled into the right place at the right time. He keeps his gestures subtle, but he can't hide the cockiness in his voice. I imagine that doesn't happen often in your line of work. Oh, ooh. I'm listening. I know you're on the job, but this won't take long. Josephine is running this corporation into the ground. Much like the way you're undermining her efforts here today, I too am preparing to make a move against her. And therein lies the beauty of our situation. We're in a position to help each other out. What do you need done? It's simple. I give you access to Sang's core system, and while inside, you retrieve some data for me. Won't that look pretty bad on your access history? The corners of his eyes cease as a, as a flat smile stretches across his jaw. A little tritio editing and some creative violence on my guard's part and we'll claim you assaulted us and entered the Matrix by force. Your invasion of our direct system will only bolster our strikes against Josephine. Deal. Excellent. So we've got VIP access. Which is awesome. Alright, um, we're going to end this right now and we will be back with more of this. Thank you guys for watching. We're, we're so close.